The origin of modern humans is the most fascinating question in human prehistory. We are curious about when and where our ancestors evolved from early hominins and when our early Homo sapiens relatives became fully modern. Welcome to Anthromedia. Before we proceed, don't forget to subscribe. Most experts believe that Homo sapiens took their first steps in Africa before a global dispersion. All modern humans came from a small source population of less than 1000 individuals in relatively recent times. The discovery at Jebel Irhaud in Morocco supports the notion that Homo sapiens originated in Africa. Fossils from Jebel Irhaud dating back around 300,000 years display a mix of modern and primitive features representing an intermediate stage in human evolution. This finding supports genetic evidence indicating that the split between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals around 400,000 to 300,000 years ago. Before this discovery, the oldest Homo sapien fossils were in East Africa, such as the Omo Kibish skull from Ethiopia around 1,95,000 years ago and skulls from Hurto, Ethiopia around 1,60,000 years old, demonstrating transitional forms. Fossils from Africa after 1,20,000 years show fully modern features, making the completion of the anatomical transition to modern Homo sapiens. Scientists have used both fossils and genetics to understand human origins. Mitochondrial DNA, which is passed down only through mothers, has revealed that all modern humans likely originated from a 200,000 year old African population. More advanced genetic studies have revealed a complex history showing multiple branches and migrations. Recent genetic research has identified Neanderthal and Denisovian admixture events indicating interbreeding between different human species. In Africa, life was not easy. Homo sapiens had to adapt to habitat changes during the Ice Age. As Africa's environment fluctuated, our ancestors developed larger brains, flexible behavior and social structures. This allowed them to live in larger groups have advanced hunting skills and used tools effectively, ultimately reducing the unpredictability of their environment. The human lineage emerged during a time of constant climate change in Africa. The climate in sub-Saharan Africa where these early humans lived was influenced by factors like rainfall and drought. Recent research in Lake Malawi and Tanganyika in East Africa revealed a significant climate variation around 1,35,000 years ago. This period experienced extreme and prolonged droughts with occasional periods of higher rainfall approximately every 11,000 years. These Mega droughts, especially between 1,35,000 years and 75,000 years ago, drastically reduced the water levels in Lake Malawi by at least 95%. Around 75,000 years ago, Lake Malawi, which was once 340 miles long, turned into small, insignificant pools only about 6 miles across. The aridity was unimaginable. Wetter and more stable conditions returned around 70,000 years ago as lake levels rose dramatically. It's interesting to note that a major population expansion in Africa occurred around 60,000 years ago, perhaps influenced by improved and more stable environmental conditions. The question of when and how Homo sapiens left Africa and moved into Asia or Europe is a question of intense debate among scientists. Around 80,000 years ago, our ancestors started moving out of Africa. Homo sapiens 
initially explored Southwest Asia around 1,20,000 years ago. But permanent settlements did not occur until after 60,000 years ago. The early dispersal involved small, scattered groups adept at covering long distances for hunting and gathering. Some signs of these early nomadic settlements in Southwest Asia date back to around 1,20,000 years ago. One interesting finding was a rock shelter called School in Israel. The remains found there showed a mix of features, partly like Neanderthals and partly like modern humans. In 1965, another cave called Kabzia in Israel revealed some surprises. Burials of our ancestors were found and dating methods showed they were around 90,000 to 1,15,000 years old. This meant that modern humans lived in Southwest Asia alongside Neanderthals possibly as early as 1 lakh to 1 lakh 20,000 years ago. Two groups of early humans known as Kabzia and School had a mix of old and new characteristics in their skeletons. Like a modern human thought for speaking and fewer prominent brow ridges. They were also pretty good at making tools, better than the ones before them. Some of these humans were found buried with interesting things like a red deer antler suggesting they might have had more social connections than their ancestors. They lived in a specific area near the Mediterranean coast and the Jordan Rift Valley where they could find nuts, game animals and water in a landscape full of caves and rock shelters. Around 75,000 to 70,000 years ago, the weather in the region got colder and drier, coinciding with the beginning of the last ice age, which made living conditions tough. At the same time, the Mount Toba eruption in Southeast Asia caused significant cultural change and a genetic bottleneck impacting plant and animal life. When things started getting warmer and wetter again, Neanderthals came back to these areas. It took about 20,000 years before a different group of anatomically modern humans reappeared in Southwest Asia. Around 50,000 years ago, early modern humans migrated back to Southwest Asia. This happened during a period of cooling that caused Neanderthals to retreat to smaller territories especially along coastal areas. The Sahara Desert, a major obstacle between tropical Africa and the Mediterranean, experienced phases of both aridity and increased rainfall, making it periodically possible. Early modern humans may have traveled through Sahara and into the Nile Valley and Southwest Asia during periods when the climate was cooler and wetter. The landscape in Southwest Asia was dry, with fewer trees and more steppe desert plants compared to tropical Africa. However, humans who were adopted to African environments with patchy food and water were not deterred. Skeleton evidence indicates that these newcomers were tall and thin with long legs, adaptations to tropical conditions helping them thrive in semi arid environments of Southwest Asia. They brought lighter toolkits, primarily based on finely made stone blades. These blades had been used sporadically in Southern Africa thousands of years earlier, although it was once believed that advanced technologies emerged with the arrival of Homo sapiens, closer examination of earlier technological traditions shows that these innovations were foreshadowed tens of thousands of years earlier. In Southwest Asia, caves like Mount Carmel sites in Israel and Shanidar in Iraq show thousands of years of Neanderthal tool making. Hunter-gatherer bands visited these sites repeatedly from more than 70,000 years ago to modern times. Over time, Toolkits evolved and around 45,000 years ago in the Negev desert of Israel, a shift in climate led people to become more mobile. 
to adapt to dry climate, they moved away from tool making stone sources, necessitating more efficient tool production methods. This environmental challenge spurred the evolution of blade technology, where long blades were crafted from cylindrical flint cores. With its new blade technology, Homo sapiens started appearing in continental Europe around 50,000 years ago, bringing an end to 300,000-year-old Neanderthal tradition there.